Rex, you are very clever. You got a little Dalmatian in you, of course. This is Rex and this is his roadmap to success. Um, Rex is pretty nervous when I first came in. He's seen that first video. Um, and I tried to, before we actually shot that video, I tried to do a number of things to try to help him feel more comfortable. Primarily just uh, sitting, offering very soft body language and throwing treats. And he just wasn't having any of it. He's an insecure dog and I think unintentionally his guardian has been doing a number of things that have uh, exasperated the issue. One of the most common mistakes that people make with their dogs is they actually pet it to try to console it when it's upset. Anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're reinforcing. So every time he gets nervous as guardians petted him to try to console him, they were actually making him slightly more nervous. And after doing this for a couple of years, that just becomes a big issue. Um, sit. I'm only asking once. I'm waiting for him to do what I want. And I have a treat, I'm loaded. Sit. Can you get that for her? Um, sorry, we're, uh, we have somebody coming home, and uh, but we got to do this video real quick. So, all right. So basically, uh, to help the dog... Oh, crash. Good job. Passive training. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but basically, for the first video, I want to kind of set up what we went through and how we can use that. So what I like the guardians to do is find somebody that can come by once or twice a week, somebody new that the dog would react to in the same way that he reacted to me. Maybe not as strong. And you should notice it gets better and better each time. So before, instead of using chips, what I would do is get some... Uh, don't get milk bones, those give your dog cancer. But get a cookie treat of some sort that you can crumble up into little pieces and demolish and spread around over a big zone. It should probably go at least four squares by four squares and here the surface area that it's covering. And then what we wanna do is we're gonna have the person is gonna, the trigger, the person this dog's uh, reacting to is gonna be on that side. The handler with the leash is gonna be on this side. So anytime that the tail starts going phallic between the legs or starts going up, or the dog stops breathing, or starts licking his lips, or, uh, or freezes, whoever the handler is wants to call the dog back. We don't want to put any attention on the leash. We just want to make a kissing sound like He'll come back around eventually. Dogs like the kissing sound. Um, and sometimes crouching down when he comes to you, good boy, or you might want to say away, or a command word that means to move away from the person. Um, and so what we, the idea for that exercise is we want to practice having the dog move away multiple times. So if the dog is just sniffing, eating the treats, and it, the tail's not up uh, or down, or it's, the hackles aren't up, or any of the rest of those signs, but he's exclusively engrossed in the treats, then we want to have just practice having the dog come over a couple times because we want to practice him moving away. Now I was moving around pretty fast. You want to have the person just standing there, and really they should be standing sideways and not moving. Once the dog is completely engrossed in it, then they can try moving a little bit, and just like I did at first, very slowly. And at any point the dog starts showing signs of discomfort, that was great, he didn't go on the couch. Um, we should come up with a signal. Maybe if I cough, if I go, <clears throat> that means that you need to move away. Now, the person who's doing this, when the dog, if the dog is sniffing him and he moves, he can facilitate a response. So the person needs to not move at all. And you have to, they have to rely on the handler to get the dog to move away. And so you have to be watching your dog and make sure there's no tension on the leash and the tail is not going up any higher than the spine. But anytime you see that or the stiffness, you call him back, make a big deal out of it, pet, 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 and then let him, let him go back. And he's after a while gonna re, -re, -re wise the treats and go sniffing them again. And the person eventually, you're gonna have that person moving slowly, then a little bit more, then a little bit more. And don't just do it right here, it's convenient with the tile, but try to do it in different parts of the house. But, what him to, and, but when we do that, we want the treats in the middle, the, the, the new person or the trigger on that side and the handler on this side. So we can always call the dog away. Um, and again, never with any tension on the leash. I like to have you practice that like twice a day or twice a week and more is better, but with somebody new that he doesn't know. So go through your Rolodex, find some friends that you haven't seen in a while, ask them to come over. And you should notice that he starts settling down with them faster and faster. Now, I would also probably recreate the thing we did off camera, which is um, after he finally settled down, well, actually, I think we did that before, but basically what I would do is do that and then take them out for a walk together. So whoever the handler is would be a member of the family. We walk him down the street and then the, hand, the other person is going to be on the other side of the dog and keep on increasing the distance. The dog is still lunging, but he got pretty good when we were on the street. And then basically because then we have cars and also some sort of other things that serve as the treats as a distracting stimuli. And so then we walk maybe about four or five houses, turn around, come back. And if he seems pretty relaxed, if he can, and the, hand, and the leash person, or the new person is pretty good, we want to hand them the leash and have them walk him back with us. 
So that way dogs get over things by literally moving forward and by having the person holding the leash that can create a positive association as well. Now they should not be jerking the leash or doing other things. The guardians here hired a dominant dog trainer who had some really questionable advice for them. Uh, but luckily uh, the dog is smart and he's very resilient. He came along to the positive dog training techniques we went over here. But right now we're using one of them. We have some treats in the kennel. He doesn't like going in the kennel. So we have put some high value treats in the kennel and closed the door. So now he is scratching at the door, trying to get in the kennel, something he hates going into. Now, one of the reasons he hates going in the kennel is the guardians were kind of snatching him and pushing him in or forcing him at times, because they had to get to work or school, and stuff that people do a lot. But every time we do that, we break the dog's trust. Every time we put, pull the dog into a, into a stressful situation and they can't get away, we break their trust a little bit. I think the guardians, and again, we're, we're parents here, uh, the par we have a, a child here, but I think the guardians at times have been a little bit, come on. Uh, have been a little bit uh, short, and sometimes you have to do what you got to do, but I think that those things have kind of confused the dog and broken the trust a little bit. So the more that we pet with a purpose and do passive training, we'll talk about those in a sec, the more he's going to feel more confident with us. But remember, we watch his signs. If, if we're walking towards him and he doesn't want to do something, don't pull him towards. If we want to put the collar on, don't force it on. Use the critical emotional response technique I showed you. Hold it up, when he looks at it, click, and then give him a treat. Keep on doing that until he's looking for it wherever it is, Next step I usually do is I hold it up and he's got to touch it with his nose and I click. When he, when he does it, then I give him the treat. Next one is I hold it like as a circle. I'm holding the leash here, the collar here, and I'm holding the treat on this side. I make the dog stick its nose through, then I give it the treat, but I'm not putting it all the way on. The first time it only goes through a little bit, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, then this looks dirty. But eventually yeah, I get it all the way, uh, the dog is sticking its collar, head all the way through the collar on its own because it wants to do that because we created a positive association. Um, and now we've made a positive association with the kennel. Before I came here, he would, he would growl if the guardian tried to put him in here. Now he's trying to put himself in on, on his own. Uh, let me see, we also went over rules and structure. Rules are important because he doesn't have any rules and I think the lack of rules has convinced him into thinking come, that he is uh, the same level or rank as, his author as the guardians in the house. So from now on, he's not allowed in the furniture uh, for a minimum of 30 days or as long as the problem's still going on. When he gets on the furniture, remember to do the treat toss off and say off and then sit down on it and block him from going back on it or put the tin foil on if you need to. Um, let me see, when we can, we wanna to try to find a house sitter or somebody that can stay with him so we don't have to put him in there or put him back here when we are uh, doing the kennel training. I will try to remember to put a post about above a link to kennel training. If I don't, just message me. I can privately send you, I've got hundreds of videos for that. If you're putting him back there to leave, make sure you take him out and fetch him. Uh, do some things to burn his excess energy, a long walk or whatever it is before you put him back there, and then get a Kong filled with peanut butter. You know, uh, get him a, a bully stick. Get him some really fun stuff to occupy his time back there. But if we burn off a lot of excess energy and then provide him some good en enrichment, he's gonna be a lot, do a lot better. Um, let me see, um, when we're walking, remember to do the walk that I mentioned, uh, that one, I, one of the guardians was walking around the perimeter of the yard. Do that again without the other dogs present and just stop every couple steps and ask them to sit, give them a treat for sitting and then continue walking. Um, same thing when we're out walking, when you were walking, uh, if you're with him and he starts pulling, as soon as he pulls, stop. And then, and then and when he stops pulling, call him back to you when he comes back to you, then you can continue. So the idea is we're not gonna let him lunge on the leash. That's all right, this is, that's all right, this is, this is good because he really wants to go in there to get that treat. So then they were making the, that for the forbidden fruit and he wants to go in there more. Other rules would be if somebody's eating here, he's not allowed to be on this carpet when people are eating here. We're gonna use the escalating consequences for that. I have to shift around a little bit. Uh, but uh, we can also use that off command. So maybe for here, we take, we, we he's here, to do it, to train him to leave the area, we're just gonna, of course I don't have any in my, in my treat pouch, you're getting almost a whole pack. So if I wanna teach him to go off of here, teach him a directional command, I just do it like that. Off. And then wait for him to come back. I'm not going to do it right now because he's still off. I'm going to wait for him to come over here. Off. I would probably should have thrown a little bit further so he completely exceeded getting off of it. But I would go to every room in the house with two treats at every door. To, if I'm in the bedroom, this is the hallway, toss it three feet out. When he goes out, say the word out. So that way we practice and that way anytime we want to ask him to leave, he already knows how to do that and he's happy to do it because he thinks he's going to get a reward. We incorporated a dog bed. I would recommend putting a dog bed here and having a dog bed in every room that he hangs out in. Nobody. Um, that's smart. I like that. That's the Dalmatian. 
Uh, but basically, we want to teach him to use the dog bed kind of the same way that I do for the kennel. So we're going to toss the treat on it. We're going to call the dog bed Prime for Optimus Prime. Pretty cool name. Um, and come up with a cool name for the, do for the kennel as well, a new kennel. Uh, the guardians need to order a new one because this one is all beat to heck. Crash. Now, he wanted the treat, but I wasn't offering the treat, and I'm giving him at least some uh, reward for what he was doing. And that's basically uh, operate, uh, not operate conditioning. That's basically uh, what I call passive training. I didn't ask him to lay down, but laying down is something I like him to do, and I want him to do it as a repeatable command. So if every time he lays down on his own, you reach over and pet him and say the word crash or chill or whatever word you want to use, use a fun word. But as soon as he lays down, you pet him and say chill. Well, after you do that like 20, 30, 40 times, after a while you say chill and he'll lay down anticipating getting that attention. So um, that also leads me, and so we do this for everything he does that we want to make a command. Sit, come, lay down, brings me a toy. I'm going to say the name of the toy each time, right? Yes. Uh, let me see, what else? We also want to use passive training. So if he comes up and nudges me with his nose or scratches and paws at me and I pet him, he's telling me what to do and that's validating that he is the boss of me because I'm petting him. So instead what I would do is when he nudges me, oh, good job, buddy. That's a good sign. He said he's good at trusting of me to do this. And from where we started out, I'm glad that we got to this point. Um, so basically, uh, for, pe uh, for petting with a purpose, it's just asking the dog to do something before you pet it, especially if the dog is telling you what to do. So if he's nudging me, he's giving me an order. Nothing happens anymore when he gives a human an order. But when the human gives him a counter order, tells him to sit, and he sits, he gets a reward. There's an incentive for him to do what we want him to do. So remember, when you pet him, try to pet him under his chin and just say the word sit. Not good sit, not Rex, not, not anything else, just sit. And not <gasps> sit. So one of somebody got really excited, which is good. We like people getting excited about their dog's good behavior because that's what we're, that's the whole point of this. Um, so now remember he's going to use the watch words of paycheck. Paycheck means I think you've forgotten to pay, uh, to ask the dog to do something. So you don't argue. We just stop petting, tell the dog to sit, and we pet it under his chin once it sits and say sit. And then we tell the person, uh, he got up while I was petting him when you were in the other room when he came in. And he heard you and stood up and I continued petting and David said that's a lot. Once you ask him to sit, you can pet him for hours after that. He just has to change his state or prepay for it. Prepay would be coming sitting in front of you as the way of saying, I want some attention. Make sure when he does that, that we, re we recognize that and reward that. And so I usually use the watchword reward. So if I'm in the house and somebody says reward to me, I look at the dog and whatever the dog is doing, I, I only have three seconds to correct or reward the dog. I probably, if, if somebody else is telling me that I missed it, I'm only made to have one second. So I'm not gonna ask, if, he, if somebody says reward, I'm just gonna say crash if he's laying down. If he's sitting, I'm petting him to say sit. If he's standing, I'm assuming he just came to me, I'm going to pet him and say come. Remember, never pet him on top of his head. Try to pet him under his chin, but never up here. Um, you can caress and scratch, just never pat. Uh, let me see. Um, walk through him instead of walking around him. If he's in your, now, if he's asleep like this, I could step over him. But if he's standing in front of me and I wanted to walk to where the camera is and I walked around him, I'm deferring. That's a subtle way of telling him that he has more authority than me because I'm burning more energy to move around him rather than have, making him burn energy to get out of my way. But as a dog, we want him to be a follower, so he should learn to get out of everyone's way. Um, we have a little one in the house. I would suggest you do the chocolate thing that I talked about. That's a little secret if you have kids. I can show you how to get your kids to help you. <laughs> Got some howling dogs. Um, I can show you how to get your kids to actually work with your dog in a positive way just by incorporating a little candy at the right time. You have to, it's one of those things you got to book me for. Uh, let me see, what else do we go over? Um, other rules, not being allowed in the kitchen when people are eating, uh, when preparing food, not being allowed around the kitchen table when we're eating. You're going to use the escalating consequences to enforce those. If you did a focus exercise, if you forget how to do the focus exercise, message me, I can send you a link to it. But you do that with 12 treats per time. Remember at first it's one second, one second. Eventually it's one second, 20 seconds. But get that 20 seconds by going very progressively. At any point, if you're at seven, go from seven to eight seconds, you can go to seven, and you can go to eight, and you turn around, go back to seven and practice more. The idea is to practice in the house when nobody has any chocolate or any, really any food at first. Eventually, we want to do it when there are a dog barking on TV and other, we want to create distractions once the dog has been established. Once the dog can do the focus for up to 20 seconds inside, then I'd like the guardians to go practice on their deck without the neighbor dogs out. Because now there's a lot of distractions. We need to help him practice focusing and, and uh, filtering things out. And the way we do that is, again, very progressively making it, putting the dog in position to succeed by helping to practice in the easiest scenario possible first. 
Then once it's comfortable, then, then we're gradually starting adding back the real world elements until we get to the real world situation and their dog's howling next door and he's not fence fighting or running next to him. He's ignoring them and paying attention to you because you have the treat for him. Now, I, we had a little bit of a setback at the end. I put the Martingale collar on him and the last, uh, the trainer the Guardians had hired was, uh, like I said, dominance theory to say the least. I've never heard somebody, a trainer, anybody who works with dogs ever say, don't exercise your dog. And that's one of the things he suggested for a Dalmatian, that's just not smart. So, uh, but he also used a, tr uh, pr a choke chain. And I think that he is sensitive on his neck because of that. Um, so what we did for this is we put the martingale on and then we put the, uh, the leash uh, where it attaches to his spine. We run the leash around his chest and then always go through the loop towards his head, never towards his butt. That'll give you a lot more control of him. He didn't like it when I started to pull him up, but he gave me a warning that he wasn't comfortable and that was being stiff. So if you see, if you, your gut tells you that he's warning you, go with your gut. Or if he gets stiff or if you're not sure, you better, it's not worth pushing it. Just go with it and just walk away with him. And if he's reactive to somebody, go or increase the distance. That's what we're, that exercise with the crumbs on the floor is all about is teaching him to move away. Sometimes you might have to recreate the situation on a sidewalk somewhere. If there's an area that he consistently has a bad behavior in, we want to recreate that situation. So if it's maybe never a playground when it's crazy, well, maybe we go and practice the playground uh, at 3 o'clock or, you know, at 11 o'clock in the morning when there's no kids around. And so we just help him practice being calm and focusing on that without all the distractions. Then we might do it another day when we bring our kid. So there's only one kid playing and he knows that kid and he can deal with that. The next time we do it, maybe bring our kid and one of our kid's friends. So we, again, we're gonna make it very progressive, easy for him to practice each situation. As he gets comfortable, then we make it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more challenging until eventually it's the real world deal and, he's, and he knows how to do it with a plum. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? Is there anything else we went over that we forget? Uh, make sure the humans are eating something first before they feed him. So put food in the bowl, eat uh, five or more bites with the chip, and then give him permission to eat, and give, give him a command word to eat. And make sure that, you know, have the kids come up with a command word if possible. And also come up with a list of the command words. Most of us say aversions of the command word. We make the dog listen for, or create a big, huge vocabulary. Come, come here, over here, here boy, dog's name, whistle, tap my thigh, and something else. Now he's got to listen for seven words versus one. So that would be another watchword. I might say vocabulary. And if I say vocabulary, that means I was saying, come here, ah, come. We're gonna make it easier for him to remember. Um, also, repeat or rerun should be another watchword because the guardians here have a tendency to say the command word multiple times. The more we say it, the less we mean it. Uh, remember, if I forget to put the video for the uh, kennel training, message me and I'll either link it later or send you a link to it so you can practice that same thing. But again, we want him to practice being in the kennel for progressively longer and longer periods of time with the door open. And uh, things we can do, putting the, uh, the treats in there and closing it, taking a, a marrow bone and do, drilling a hole through the marrow while it's frozen, and then put in a zip. And make sure you zip it pretty low. Uh, whatever's gonna be comfortable for the dog. I know, I'm talking a lot. Um, but this way, he wants he can not take the marrow bone out of there. Normally, I'm guessing when that's the case, that would have happened faster. Rex. So again, this is a great way to redirect and focus and just, I get, normally I'm guessing he wouldn't be here. He'd be barking at the window, correct? But the neighbor dogs are barking. He wouldn't be barking. Oh, we have, I believe somebody's about to come in the door. This is Rex. This is Rex's roadmap to success. No, no, so keep it with me. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. At least sometimes you mean it. 